OK, hi there. Welcome to a video looking at another way of measuring inequality of income and wealth. So in this short revision video, we're going to spend a few minutes looking at an alternative way of measuring inequality in a country. And this is called the Palmer Ratio. Now, many students will be familiar with the Gini coefficient as a measure of inequality. The Gini coefficient is calculated after, first of all, constructing a Lorenz curve to show the distribution of income and wealth. And inequality can range from zero, with no inequality, to one, or 100 if you index it, where there is perfect inequality. Well, the Palmer ratio is an alternative way of measuring inequality. And how do we construct, or how do we calculate the Palmer ratio? Well, the Palmer ratio focuses on the differences between those in the top and the bottom income brackets in a country. It's measured as the share of all income received by the top 10% of people with the highest disposable income, so the richest 10% of a population, divided by the share of disposable income received by the 40% of people with the lowest income. Palmer Ratio came into being about 10 years ago. Two economists, Cobham and Sumner, proposed an alternative to the Gini coefficient, and they named it after Jose Gabriel Palmer, who was a Chilean economist. Now, Palmer had initially noticed that in most countries, the middle class, which we define as those in the sort of fifth to ninth income deciles, or the 40 to 90 percent range, they take in around half of the income. And that income is relatively stable, a strikingly consistent finding that often the share of income in the middle classes is relatively stable. Uh, what was changing was income at the top 10 percent and the bottom 40 percent. So given that insight, the Palmer ratio tries to capture what is happening right at the top of the income distribution, the top 10 percent, divided by what's happening at the bottom 40 percent. In other words, the two extremes of the income uh, bottom 40%, the two extremes of the income distribution. And the beauty of the Palmer Ratio is it's, a, it's just a nice, easy calculation to make. So what has happened to the UK Palmer Ratio over recent times? Well, here's a chart showing the data uh, for the UK. And you can see it's gently sloping upwards. The Palmer Ratio has been above 1 since the mid-1980s. In other words, the top 10% of income households have more cumulative income than the bottom 40% if it's above one. Uh, it peaked in 2006 on this data series, just before the global financial crisis a year or two later, and has fallen gently since, although you can also notice it was edging up higher in the years before the COVID pandemic. So the UK has a Palmer ratio of about 1.5, but of course different countries will have very different income distributions. So here's a selection of countries with significantly higher Palmer ratios. Uh, South Africa, Namibia, uh, Mozambique, Brazil and Botswana. Notice here the very, very high income share of the richest 10%. In South Africa, the poorest, uh, the richest decile, the richest 10% have over half of the cumulative income. Whereas the poorest 40% only have 7% of income. And of course, if you divide... The richest 10% by the poorest 40%, you get the Palmer ratio. And here are the numbers for these countries in South Africa. And this is one of those great stats I think you can have in your revision notes. The Palmer ratio is 7. The richest 10% have 7 times the income, 7 times the income of the bottom 40% of households. And in all of these cases, the Palmer ratio is well above 3, in some cases above 5. In Brazil, for example, it's 4.1. Here are some countries uh, which have a significantly more equal income distribution. Slovenia, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Ukraine, Iceland, Norway and Finland. Well, you've probably noticed, if you look at the data here, that all of these countries have a Palmer ratio of less than one. Here are the numbers for you. Uh, so ranging from 0.82 in Slovenia to 0.97 in Finland. So these countries have a very low Gini coefficient as well. Uh, they are good examples of nations with a significantly lower Palmer ratio. But they're a fairly select bunch indeed. 
So there we go. Hopefully this is a useful addition to your understanding of how we might measure inequality. And the World Bank now is uh, very keen on using the Palmer Ratio as one of their key inequality measures when they uh, publish data on different countries. Thanks for joining in. Take care and see you soon.